Hey guys, it's V from AP Simplified, and in this video, we will be solving limits through graphical analysis and algebraic calculations. So let's say I have the following graph f of x. Notice the discontinuities at x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 2. At, at x equals 0, there's a hole. At x equals 1, there's just a plain old discontinuity. And at x equals 2, there is, a, there is an asymptote. However, these discontinuities aren't that big of a deal, and we, we will still be able to solve the limits. So the first question asks us to evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. So in this case, approaching the x-coordinate 0 from the right with a value is greater than 0, yields us a y coordinate of 1. And from the left, as we approach the y from the left, as we approach the x coordinate 1, 0 from the left, we notice that the y coordinate also equals 1. Since the right limit and the left limit equal each other, or equal 1, the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 equals 1. So the second prob problem asks us to evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. So in this case, as we approach 1 from the right, we notice that the limit actually equals 1. So from the right, it equals 1. But from the left, if we approach x equals 1 from the left, it equals 2. Since the left limit and the right limit do not equal each other, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is d and e, or does not exist. The third problem asks us to evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left. So in this case, Given this x coordinate 1, if we approach it from the left, or this piecewise function, we notice that it, it yields us, us 2. So in this case, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left equals 2. So the last problem down here asks us to evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left again. And in this case, if we approach 2 from the left, we notice that, so since 2 is here, from the left would be this piecewise function over here. And if we approach it from the left, meaning this way, we notice that the, the function goes downward infinite, infinitely. So this means that this limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left is actually negative infinity. And for now, we can, all, we can call this d and e. So it is important to remember, once again, that the limit at a certain point only exists if the right limit and the left limit equal each other. For example, we saw that in, at x equals 0, the left limit, which can be shown by, by this part of the line, and the right limit, as shown by this part of the line, equals 1. But we sh we we by, the second, by the, with the second problem, this is not the case since the right limit, which can be shown by this one, equal 1, and the left limit, as shown by this one, equals 2. And that's important. Alright, All right. let's say we're given the following function and asked to evaluate the limit as it approaches 2. In this case, the graph is not provided, and thus algebra must be used to solve this limit. So plugging in 2 into this expression uh, gives us the following. 3 times 4 minus 2 minus 10 over 4 minus 4. Uh, simplifying this gives us 12 minus 2 minus 10 over 4, which equals 10 minus 10 over, sorry, over 0, over 0, which equals 0 over 0. So in this case, this 0 over 0 is known as the indeterminate form. And what this basically signifies is that this expression must be further simplified in order to solve the limit. So in this case, we should notice that the, both the top function and the bottom function can be factored. In this case, the top function can be factored into 3x plus 5 and x minus 2. And the bottom function can be factored into x minus 2 and x plus 2. So notice that the top, notice that the x minus 2 in the numerator and the x minus 2 in the denominator can cancel out. So at the end, we are left with this expression, the limit of x, the, the limit of, the limit of 3x plus 5 over x plus 2 as x approaches 2. And from here, all we need to do is substitute 2 for x, and doing that, we get 3 times 2 plus 5 over 2 plus 2. Simplifying this gives us 11 over 4, and that is your answer. So, moving to the next problem. Uh, all, like the previous problem, all we need to do is substitute 0 into the, into the, for x, and we have to see whether we get 0 over 0. So in this case, doing that gives us 0 plus 0 minus 3 over 2 minus 4. 
And simplifying this further gives us negative 3 over 2 minus 2, which equals negative 3 over 0. So in this case, substituting 0 in for x does not give us uh, 0 over 0, but instead it gives us an answer that is undefined. Since this answer is undefined, we can say that the limit of x, x, x to the 4th plus 3x minus 3 over 2 minus the root of x squared plus 4 equals d and e. So, moving to the next problem, well, like the previous problem, we should substitute 4 for x and see what we get. So, substituting 4, we get root of 4 minus 2 over 16 minus 16. So, simplifying out, this equals 2 minus 2 over 0, or simply 0 over 0. Now, once again, this is the indeterminate form, and thus we have to simplify this further. So, in this case, uh, what we, what we can, what, since so in this case, there's, there's nothing to be factored out except the bottom. We can take out the x and stuff, but instead, uh, we should notice that there is uh, root x minus two, and there's a conjugate that can be multiplied by both the numerator and the denominator. That will that will be able to turn this numerator into a more prettier uh, expression. So in this case, if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the root x of by the conjugate of negative uh, of the root of x minus 2 which is the root of x plus 2 and we simplify this out we get the expression the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 over x squared minus 4x times root of x plus 2 so in this at this moment we should uh, factor out the x in this expression and uh, this would give us the following expression limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 over x times x minus 4 times root x plus 2 so in this case the x minus 4 in the numerator and the x minus 4 in the denominator will can cancel out and this will yield us this will equal limit of x as a limit of x approaches 4 of 1 over x times root of x plus 2 and substituting 4 in for x will give us 1 over 4 times root of 4 plus 2 or 1 over 4 times 4 or 1 over 16 so at the end the limit of root of x minus 2 over x squared minus 4x as x approaches 4 is 1 over 16 so the last problem we have today is the following, and it asks us the limit of x cubed minus 7x over x, mi uh, over x cubed. So in this case, if we substitute an x for 0, we get 0 minus 0 over 0, and at the end, this also equals 0 over 0. We know that 0 over 0 is indeterminate form, and this is just we simplify. And in this case, notice how we only have one term in the denominator, and that's good. That's good for us, because now we can split up the numerator into two different fractions. So this so at the end if we do this we get the limit of at uh, limit of x cubed over x cubed minus 7x over x cubed as x approaches 0 simplifying simplifying this gives us limit of 1 minus 7 over x squared as x approaches 0 and we now know that this is going to be further simplified and thus plugging in 0 for x we get 1 minus 7 over 0. And now we know that 7, anything over 0 is infinity, so plugging and so substituting 7 over 0 for infinity, we get 1 minus infinity. Now, since infinity is such a large number, 1 minus a large number equals a super, super, super negative number. So a super, super, super negative number would, would, would equal a negative infinity. Thus, and as of right now, a negative infinity would be also called a D and E. So, at the end, the limit of this function as x approaches 0 would equal d and e.